Escape. Shade wheeled and dived into the trees, but it was too late. Shade, is that you? Shade! Crouch in his hiding place, he could see Throb, turning slowly, seeking him out with beans of sound. The bright wing's head fell from his jaws and lolled to one side, so Shade could see the face. He almost cried out in relief. Not Marina. He had to find her. He released his grip, opened his wings and flew. Shade! He'd stick below the tree line. Throb's wings were too wide to follow him. Through the tight weave of foliage she flashed, flipping from side to side, almost over to turn his back sometimes, to avoid getting impaled on a pointy twig or dashing himself against the trunk. Overhead, he could hear Throb curse, then send sound piercing down through the leaves and branches, trying to get a fix on him. Wings pulled tight, Shade flew headlong, trying to keep track of Throb's position. Silently, not grazing even a single leaf, he banged tightly, darting back the way he'd come. Then, twice or more, he made quick changes in direction, until he could no longer hear Throb's crackling wing beats above him. He peered up through the leaves and pierced together a bit of the sky. Where would she be? It was almost on. She couldn't stay out much longer. She'd go back to the roost. Choking for breath, he burst from the cover of the trees and streaked toward the stone hollow. He sent out a quick spray of sound. No sign of Goth. He must still be out hunting. But he pulled back from the entrance at the last moment, circling. What if Throb had beaten him back? What if he was waiting inside? Marina? He called out quietly. In here, came her voice from the roost. He was lucky. He shot through the tunnel and into the stone hollow. There she was, grooming her wings, and he was so grateful to see her, even though she looked up at him coldly, still angry. Marina, we've got to... His flesh crawled. Goff was perched silently at the back of the hollow, still gnawing on a bone. It seemed impossible to him that he'd felt safe with this bat just hours ago. Now, the sight of him chewing made him sick to his stomach. Meat eater. Bat eater. Go to what? Goff asked. Shade forced himself to land, take a few deep breaths. He was covered with sweat and dust. Oh, I was just going to tell Marina she should come see this big icicle near the stream. I'm tired, Marina said with a yawn. And I've seen icicles before, Shade. Not one this big. He stared at her, and she looked back at him strange before giving a quick nod. All right, all right, show me this icicle. Then let's get some sleep. Okay, we won't be long, he told Goth. I'll come too. Shay tried to keep his face from tightening. Great! He tried to pick up something that Goth wouldn't be interested in, and Shay knew he despised ice. Thought it was some kind of personal insult. Goth must know. Numb with dread, he led the way down the stone tunnel. It's over here! Sit shade outside. At first, if he led them away from the roost, he'd have more time before Throb found them. Time to maybe make an escape, lose Goff in the undergrowth, and sunrise not more than twenty minutes away. Do you hear that? Goff asked. Yeah, said Marina. Sounds like a horde of insects. It was getting louder now, but it had the regularity that made Shade think it wasn't insects at all, but some kind of human machine. Whatever it was, it was coming their way. There is Throb, said Goth. Shade looked. Throb was beating his way toward them. Fast. He'd be there in less than a minute. What is that? Marina gasped. Bearing down on Throb was kind of human flying machine. Wings a blur. Lights blazing. Throb started to bellow, but the machine flew over him, drowning out his voice. Shade stared in horror as it came straight for him and reared overhead. Wind exploded around him. A dart whistled through the air, grazing his tail, and slammed into a branch. A second dart plunged into Goth's chest. Roaring in anger, the giant bat spiraled down, thrashing as he tried to wrench it free. Let's go! Shade shouted to Marina. They reared away from the flying machine, hurling back down into the forest. Shade flew low to the ground, even though he knew it was dangerous. Raccoons, wild dogs, even snakes could leap up and snap at them. Owls waiting in branches could drop on them like forked lightning. 
but above the tree line they'd be easy prey for the humans and their deadly darts. Birds were starting to rise from the nests, and at dawn, chorus cut into the icy morning air. Where? he asked Marina urgently. She was the expert. To his alarm, she landed on the ground. What are you doing? At the base of an elm was a thick bed of rain matted leaves. Marina quickly nosed around in them, and then started burrowing with her claws and head, pushing her way deeper into the mulch. Shade understood, and instantly followed her lead. Wicking quickly, they soon hollowed out a deep nest. Scuttling back up to the opening, Marina dragged some leaves across, covering their tracks. Inside it was damp and cold, and they huddled close together. Shade was so tired her whole body was shaking. What happened? she asked him. I saw Throb eating a bat. You sure? He nodded, teeth chattering. I think the humans killed Goth. Those starts. He remembered the one that had narrowly missed him and shivered. What about Frob? He shook his head. When that machine came, I lost sight of him. The image of the limp bright wing and Throb's jaws shimmered in his mind again, and he winced. I hope they got him, he said vengefully. I had a feeling about them, you know, she said. Shade said nothing. A couple of nights ago, I woke up in the roost and Throb was staring at me. And there was just something about his eyes. Hungry. Like I was food. Why didn't you tell me? What would he have done? He scythed, ashamed. Laughed. Said you were seeing things. I'm stupid. Bats who fed on their own kind. They were monsters. No animal he'd ever heard of. Not even the owls did such a thing. He felt a sudden rush of self-loathing. He trusted Goth believed every word he'd said. To the jungle, raise an army, to feed the birds and the beasts once and for all. He'd thought they were going to be allies. He'd thought it was all part of the promise. You wanted to be like them, Marina said. He nodded miserably. Look at me, he shouted unwordly. Look at how small I am. Who wouldn't want power like that? The power to kill an owl. The power to stop them from burning your roost down, to help you call in and find your father. But why didn't they just eat us right away? He asked. They needed us at first, to give them directions. After we showed them how to read stars, they didn't need us anymore. I thought it was you, Marina, when I first saw him eating that bat. I thought it was you. Must have caught a straggler, she said in a dull voice. He shivered again, and they shuffled closer, enfolding each other in their wings. They wanted to kill all of us, the humans, didn't they? Marina muttered darkly. My colony was right all along. Humans are evil. Shade clenched his teeth, not knowing what to say. That machine came straight at us, Marina went on. They knew where we were. How? The bands, she briefed. It must be. They tell them where we are. Shade's fur bristled. The idea of that machine coming back, those starch plunging into him. The bands don't mean anything, do they? Marina said savagely. All it does is mark me, so they can come kill us. No wonder my colony drove me off. They were right. I'm cursed. Don't, Shade said hoarsely. And you were right too. These humans aren't going to help us. And as long as I'm with you, you're in danger too. He squeezed his eyes shut, wishing he could drive all thoughts from his head. Everything had collapsed. He didn't know what he had left to believe in. He'd felt so sure he'd left the echo chamber at Tree Haven. And now, what did he know? The bands meant nothing. What had his father risked his life for? What did Frida know? Maybe there was no promise at all. It was a story, a lie, and Bathsheba was right all along. There was only night and day and the law, and it's all there ever would be. We are going to find my colony, Shade said grimly, and we're going to find the truth about the bands, about everything. Goff fell, the dart deep in his side, limp wings knocking frozen leaves. He hit the ground in a heap. His vision swam, and it was an effort to lift his head. One last try. Drunkenly twisting his neck, he clenched the base of the dart in his teeth and jerked back. 
The dart ripped clean and blood flowed from the wound. His fling heaved for air. Some kind of poison in the dart, like those needles they used to stick in him. Fight it. Fight it. He was so tired. So heavy. Blackness. Then... Dry leaves crackling, the ground vibrating, and a pair of gloved hands picked him up. He kept his eyes closed, but he was suddenly totally awake. He concentrated on the hands, got the strength of the fingers where the grip was weakest. He opened one eye just a slit and saw the man from the artificial jungle looking down at him, and his face protected behind a plastic hood. Goff closed his eye, took a long, slow breath, and then struck. He flared his wings, knocked the man in the face, and making him stumble back with a long, slow moan of surprise. The man's grip loosened, and Goff wrenched his body free, launching himself into the air. He plunged at the hood, sinking his claws into the fabric and ripping it up and off the human's head. The man was reaching for something at his side, lifting it, trying to aim. Goff darted down, claws lowered, and raked him across the face. The man dropped the object in his hands and clutched the gash in his cheek. Zods curse you! Goff shrieked as he lifted himself up through a gap in the trees, high into the sky. In a nearby field, he caught a glimpse of the flying machine, resting on the ground, and two more humans running into the woods toward the man. Shade! he cried. Marina! Throb! Here! I'm here! Flapping toward him was Throb, and Goff was almost glad to see him. I thought they'd killed you, cried Throb. It was another sleeping potion. Keep flying this way. We'll get away from them. Where are the other two? Throb's eyes flickered guiltily. Throb? I don't know. Why didn't you kill Marina like I told you? I thought I did, Throb faltered. It was a Brightwing, all alone, and I killed it. And then I realized it wasn't her, and... He trailed off miserably. And what, Throb? And the runty one saw. You idiot, said Goff with quiet loathing. No wonder he was acting so strangely. I thought they were trying to escape. He looked contentiously at Throb. You let them get away. They were darts everywhere. I couldn't see. Shut up. But we don't need them, said Throb. We can find our own way south now. We get back to the jungle fast without the little bats to slow us down. We needed the runt. For my plans. Go fell silent, furious. He should have done it himself. Killed Marina, made it look like an owl had struck her. Then he would have had Shade safely all to himself. No, it was ruined. Shade knew there were bad eaters. How could he possibly win back his trust? But he wouldn't turn back now. He wouldn't be defeated by these little bats. He'd made his promise with Zots. And so help him, Zots, he would not fail. We are going to follow them, he told Throb. We are going to find them.